Hello and welcome to another video in this VR game tutorial series. In this one, we're going to take a look at bringing in our 3D art models and creating our environment and then lighting it with a HDRI. Let's dive right in. I just need to say a quick thank you to the following people. William C. Tuttle, Kiona Rain, Marco Rossi, VR Anime Ted, Eli L, Blessing Odalai, Exodus, Howard Gunderson, Jane Jacobs, David Blissett, Patrick Ordain, Riflabin, and Adam. So I really appreciate all the help and support you guys are giving me over on Patreon. It's really helping with this channel and keeping me going and helping deliver new and interesting content. Thanks again and on with the video. I just wanted to take a quick look at what we're going to be making here. This is These are the free art models that I've made. These are, this is the block out that I designed for this particular tutorial series. Uh, and it just shows where all the main art assets are going to go. But this one I'm giving away for free to everyone watching this video. And the link for that is in the description. If you do support me on Patreon, um, then on the upper tiers, you'll have access to the complete project with all the high res art assets in. And I, I can show you what those look like. They look like this. So this is a, you can see where I've improved upon the block out and gone and added all the high res models. Um, so this will be available on Patreon, um, but for this tutorial, everyone can follow along. Um, we've got a free content here, which is almost exactly the same layout, um, but we're going to learn how we can bring in this art pack, uh, apply a HDRI, H, <laughs> apply a HDRI to the scene, and then use it to create the lighting. So we're going to go ahead, and we're actually going to create a new scene. Go file new scene. And then we're going to use the basic built-in scene uh, and then go to create and it's just going to load up this empty scene it's got a main camera in it and a directional light which is great so we're going to go ahead and delete the main camera we're not going to need that we're actually going to be using our xr rig i'm going to right click xr and we'll go for the room scale xr rig this is the action based rig uh, and it's not quite centered at zero so we'll click on the little three dots and go to reset position Tracking origin mode is on the floor, that's what we want. Uh, and then you'll see we've got our main camera and we've got our left controller and our right controller, all with the action references already set up for us. And you can watch the first part of this tutorial series, which will show you how to populate all of those and bring in the XR rigs and the interaction toolkit. So go ahead and check those out. And this video follows directly along from those. We've got our XR rig. And we've got this XI interaction manager, which is looking everything up. We do not actually need to add a component to this to enable the controller tracking. We're going to add in the input action manager. And we're going to click on the plus and we're going to click on the little circle and add in our XRI default input actions. Now to get your free art assets, I've put a link in the description. You go ahead and download those and then you're going to need to go and right click on the assets and go to import package custom package and then locate the package you downloaded and install it and then when you find it and you double click to load it in you'll come up with this folder structure and you'll see it's got the wild west shooter and then the art free content uh, and then a prefab that contains it all put together so you can go ahead and import those i've already done that so i'm not going to do it again and it's going to sit inside this wild west shooter folder and you'll have the art and here you'll see we've got FBX and we've got free content and you'll see the Enviro block out for free, which looks like this. Very nice. Uh, I made a prefab of this so you can just go to the prefab folder, Enviro block out and you can just drop that right in the scene and boom, there you go. This is the art you're going to need to follow along with the rest of the tutorial. Now we need to take a look at how we're going to light this scene. So at the moment it's just lit by the directional light. And we'll also have in our lighting, uh, we're going to set up our environment. It's currently a default skybox. Now we're going to change the default skybox. We're actually going to use a uh, HDRI. Uh, and I'm going to show you where to get that now. So if you open up a web browser and go to hdrihaven.com slash HDRIs, and you'll see a website that presents you with a ton of HDRI images, spherical images that we can use to light our scene. Um, and I've actually gone ahead and found one that's quite suitable. So to find one, the one we're going to use, you, you can go to outdoor, click on there, and then under search, 
type desert. Enter and you'll get one result come up. It's this geo gap one. If you click on there and go ahead and download the 2K one uh, and it will download your HDRI to your download folder. So then you need to bring that into Unity and to do that, create you can create a folder in your Wild West shooter and go ahead and import it as you normally would a normal asset and just change the text to type to cube and then go ahead and hit apply uh, and you'll see it turns it into it's got this kind of little unwrapped cube icon in the left and then if you go ahead and create a new material like so boom we'll call this wild west skybox and we'll make this material a skybox cube map and we'll go ahead and drag in our geo gap material into the slot there and then if you left click and um, drag in that little sample sample window to see you be able to look around then go to your lighting tab and drag in your new wild west skybox material into the slot so it looks like that and we'll go ahead and we'll drag in our directional light as the sun source then back in the scene this version of unity requires a lighting settings we're going to go ahead and click on the new lighting settings. It's going to drop it down into whatever folder we've got selected. And we can call this Wild West Shooter Settings. And all these settings will then be stored in the settings. We can create other ones of these, which will all have their own unique settings. So let's go and have a look and take a look where we are. So we've got in our HDRI into the scene. That's looking nice. Now, from an art perspective, our player is going to be down here. And this is where the majority of the action is going to be taking place. It's going to be shooting objects inside this little area. Now, currently, the sun is behind this. So uh, when we go ahead and bake the lighting, it's going to be quite dark in here because we're going to match up our directional light with the sun. So what we want to do is for the sun to be in front so all the light shines into our main area of focus. We need to rotate this cube map around. To do that, go ahead and click on the material we created. And it's got a rotation on a slider so we can bring it all the way around. You can see it affecting our scene here as we go around and we want to get it so it's right behind the player. That's pretty good. Let's bring it back a little ways. Uh, in fact, let's put it at a slight angle so we get a little bit of nice shadowing in this little room here. And then take our directional light Let's get a good position so we can see both the sun and the angle of the directional light. And what we want to do is match up the sun with the angle of um, the directional light. So select the directional light, hit the rotation and just manipulate the sun to think it's in a, a good position that suits where it's coming from in the HDRI. That's pretty good. Looks like everything is lining up nice. Next up, we're just going to check that everything we want to bake in our scene is marked as static so by default the prefab should be marked as static if it's not you can go ahead and mark it none of this artwork is going to move and now we can take a look at our lighting settings we go ahead and click on our lighting tab and if you don't have the lighting tab should have probably pointed this out earlier you can go to window and let's find where it is it's under rendering and then lighting and then bring up the tab and you can dock it to the side here so let's take a look at some of these features. First of all, let's take a look at our baked global illumination. We want to use the subtractive because we want to use mixed lights for our game and mixed likes, mixed likes, mix, mixed, I can't speak today. Mixed lights provide baked, direct and indirect lighting for static objects and dynamic objects receive real time direct lighting and cast shadows on static objects. Uh, there might be a few things moving around in our scene. Some of the objects that we're going to be shooting uh, are going to be animating away inside our little shooting area here. So this, uh, this subtractive mode would work. We could also use baked indirect. Uh, and this is going to essentially bake all of our lighting information into our light maps. And um, we can use light probes then for any of the animated objects in the scene. We could use the bake indirect. And it's probably the most efficient route to go down. We'll just be baking all our lighting information in and our directional light 
would be set to baked um, and that'll be perfectly fine very efficient what I think would be the way to go for initially for the style I'm looking for is we want our animated objects um, to cast shadows inside our little hat so we're going to set the light to mixed and then under project setting um, then under lighting settings and um, we're going to check the subtractive so that mixed light that we've got here the directional light that's going to have the baked direct and indirect lighting for our, our static objects and our moving around objects which are called dynamic will receive real-time direct lighting and cast shadows on our static objects which is awesome we can always check and see and do a performance test later on and we can always um, revert back to completely baking all the lighting both direct and indirect next up i'm going to swap my light mapper to progressive gpu i've got a 2080 so it actually works out a lot quicker doing it this way on my machine you might prefer to do the calculations on your cpu now as a test for our lighting we're going to knock back the texels per unit i'm going to try something small initially just to make sure everything's set nicely and then in my scene view here i'm going to turn on my i'm going to click on the shaded little arrow here and i'm going to go down to my light maps and we're going to just look at texel validity which is going to show me the density of the texels in the scene the more texels there are the longer your light mats are going to bake so you can see it's on 10 at the moment if i crank this up all the way to something like it was on a minute ago 40 you see all the squares get really tiny so each one of these squares that you see the dark gray and the light gray each one of these are sending out rays into the scene they're sending out 32 direct sample rays, 512 indirect sample rays, and 256 environment rays. Um, so you can imagine why it takes a lot longer if you've got more texels. So as a quick test, we're going to put that down to 10. Light map padding is fine on 2, and the light map size for the, the moment is OK on 1024. I'm going to go in, click on Bake Light Map, and hit Generate Lighting. And it's going to ask us to save the scene so we'll click on save scene and then we'll navigate to folder where we can save it i'm just going to call this lighting setup and it's going to go ahead and bake and you see here these these are the light maps that are generated our scene's currently set on to bake light map so we're just seeing the lighting intensity values across our scene that's quite nice so let's have a look what it looks like shaded beautiful and you can see the shadows are a bit low quality at the moment that's because we've got a low texel density so we'll crank it up in a second now we know the values are okay and you can see the player's going to be down here and we've got some nice lighting in here we're going to have some lights in the corners as well to brighten up the darker areas so happy with those values let's go ahead and increase the light map resolution let's take it to 40 fine on default medium let's see what it looks like with ambient occlusion on i'm going to go ahead and click bake and then pause it and we'll see what it looks like after it's done so those values are looking good the shadows are starting to sharpen up now as you can see we've got a little bit of a discrepancy of our shadows and we're going to go ahead and take care of that that's probably because our sun angle is a slightly different one to the one in the seat in the hdri so let's go ahead and adjust our sun probably need to bring it down a little bit i'm going to go ahead and select my directional light change it to local and start bringing it down a little bit till that directional light shadowing starts to match the baked shadows a little bit better there we go it's about the right height and up a bit and just manipulate it into place until the shadows begin to line up and then you know we're in a good place so let's go ahead and bake those in so here we are there's that bake done and there you can see we fix our issues with the shadows being slightly longer because our directional light was at a slightly different angle to the one in our hdr so that's our scene kind of lit and from here on in because we've selected the subtractive lighting path and our directional light here is set to mix so when we create a dynamic object let's just bring in a cube for a second and put it at zero 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 you'll see it receives lighting 
but is also casting a shadow on our static objects. This is exactly what we want. So we're going to have stuff animating around our scene and we can test out performance once we start building into the headset and getting more on our scene. It may be that we have to change to the bake in direct mode and create some light probes um, and sacrifice a bit of the nice lighting for some performance. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But otherwise, this is looking really good. So now I'm going to use my Rift to test this out on. But if you've got the Oculus link cable, you can go ahead and plug it in, have a play and see how the scene looks. Or you could also use the new Air Link. And I've got a video of that on my channel as well if you want to know how to set that up. So let's jump into VR and test out our scene. Okay, so here we are in VR. It's looking really nice. The art style reminds me a little bit of Team Fortress 2. The lighting's looking really good. Probably increase the texture density a bit on the shadows. Um, but otherwise, looking really nice. Good values, so nothing's too bright. You can just imagine standing here shooting some stuff going on in the scene and having some stuff going on around behind you as well. And I was in two minds what to do with the HDRI, just whether to leave it on or whether to do like a, a more cartoony sky, so just like a blue environment around us with some uh, low poly clouds. But I actually quite like the HDRI in the background. We we'll probably just leave it like that. It's quite a nice simple lighting setup. So let's finish the setup of this scene. We can use this scene now for our tutorials moving forward. Go ahead and click on your XR rig. We're going to do our hands. We're going to drop in our model prefabs that we made in part two. So we're going to go down to our VR hands, click on the prefabs and go left hand in the left hand model and right hand in the right hand model. Back in VR, you can see here got our hands, these got our ray interactors on for a minute, but um, these are all connected and wired up from our previous tutorial for the hand animations. Here's a little bit lazy here, I did, my animation didn't quite close, bad damn. Um, but you can go ahead and tweak the animations. So these are ready to go, these are currently still got our XR ray interactors on, uh, but in the next lesson when we start looking at our grabbable objects, which is going to be our gun, and then we can look at turning these XRA interactors into direct interactors. And then we can go ahead and pick something up and we'll start hooking up the script to detect the action-based input. We can start firing the gun. So that'll be next week. But this has been really cool just to get the scene in, get it all lit, uh, and give you something, give you guys something that you can work on that's going to be visual in preparation for our upcoming lessons. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick look at what the actual scene when it's all textured, what that looks like. Um, so textured all this using Substance Painter, including the gun here, which looks really cool. It's got a nice picture of a wolf on it. Um, with all, all these are high-res assets, and all these are available on Patreon, and also given away for free all the block hours, which we saw earlier. But I just wanted to show you what the high-res ones look like. Um, they actually look cool. Really happy with the way it turned out. But the idea is that there'll be things popping up in here and we can shoot them and stuff going on. Maybe you can earn gold nuggets that will allow you to improve your guns and then get a better score. In the next one, we're going to go ahead and start looking at the XR grab interactable objects. And one of those is actually going to be our gun. So we're going to be able to hook that up and detect input from the action-based control system to fire a trigger. I'll see you in the next one.